I wish he'd been a little bit more uh, thorough in killing Buffy, though. <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad he wasn't that thorough because I never would have had a job. <laughs> 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 Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Sunnydale with five amazingly talented guests from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So without further ado, let's open up the Hellmouth and see what we find. Our first guest is an actress whose credits include Once Upon a Time, Fantasy Hospital, and can currently be seen on WandaVision. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of patron saint of scorned women trapped in the human form of Anya Jenkins. Please welcome Emma Caulfield. Hi. Hey! How What's are you? Up? I'm oh, well. I'm well. How are you? I, we, I'm good. I'm here in Orlando, and uh, temperature is mild, and uh, we're holding the line, I must say. Good, good, good. It's nice and cold here. Oh, very nice. So, yeah. uh, so I, before we get the rest of the gang out, yeah, just real quick, WandaVision. Uh, yeah, what a, crazy, what right? A, what a surprise! I, I never would, I, I, I never would have thought uh, a, a Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, a conspiracy, and a love letter to sitcoms all at the same time. I know. It's but, pretty. It's so great. I'm just. I mean. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's so, it's just so fun. It was so fun to shoot, and it's even more fun to watch. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And well, again, thank, thank, thank you for your contribution to that. It's, oh. it's really, I'm, yeah, it's, it's me and a lot of my friends are like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen next? So I know I can't tell you anything. But... I wouldn't ask you to. <laughs> <laughs> but what is happening next is our next guest. Uh, she is an actress from Bring It On, Rules of Attraction, and she is a preeminent hostess and panel moderator in her own right. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Hell Goddess Glorificus, better known as Glory. Please welcome Claire Kramer. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Patty. Hi, Emma. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi, Claire. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am well. Uh, like you, I'm missing the stages. Yes, absolutely. But at <laughs> least we have today, right? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So everything is well in your corner of the world? Everything is good. It's, it's you know, Los Angeles rained a little bit over the weekend, but nice and sunny today. So getting out after this. Well, it's, it's, it's always nice to spend a nice sunny day talking about vampires. So welcome, welcome aboard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, our next guest is an actor whose credits include Animal House Jag and recently been seen on The Field, which is available now on Amazon streaming. Today he joins us to discuss the role of Heinrich Nest, leader of the Order of Aurelius, or simply known as the Master. Please welcome Mark Metcalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Hello, sir. I'm imagining all kinds of applause. They they are, I assure you, in the Virtual chat room. Applause. They are. They are absolutely about awesome. so, well, uh, um Mark, it's so good to finally meet you. I've been a big admirer of your work for such a long time. And as a matter of fact, the other day, I this year during quarantine, one of my uh, uh, go back to's was Hill Street Blues. And, oh, yeah. And I, abs absolutely. Um, I wish your character had stayed longer. Uh, yeah, they uh, they asked me to stay longer at first, and I uh, I said no. And then later on, after we shot a couple of episodes, I liked it. And then they and they I asked them if I could stay longer, and they said no. The character you've created is just too much of a jerk, and uh, we have to kill him off. So I had my throat slit by a hooker. Uh, <laughs> that's showbiz. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well nevertheless, sir, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Thank you very much. And speaking of pleasures, our next guest is an actor, writer, and producer whose body work includes Drones, Supernatural, and the Ghosts of Albion series. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of prudent witch Tara McKay. Please welcome Amber Benson. Howdy. I like that. Prudent, prudent witch. It's very well, prudent. I... Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's just no, no, no. We don't have to do that. You know, it's not... It's not... It's not <laughs> the power is not the catch-all for everything. So, so indeed. <laughs> Amber, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Uh, I'm okay, you know, getting through this amazingly odd time that we're all living through so together. So strange. Absolutely. Bananas. Absolutely, Bananas. absolutely. And uh, <laughs> and I, just, I need to thank you as well. You worked on another project of something very dear to my heart. Uh, you did a Big Finish production of 
Dark Shadows, uh, Dress Me in Dark Dreams. And again, That's I'm right. a huge Dark Shadows fan. Ago. It was, it was, but I, it, it's, it's odd. People think of Big, Big Finish as something that's relatively new. And it's like, no, they've been cranking stuff out for, for yeah, indeed, indeed. So absolute pleasure to have you on board here. Yay. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our <laughs> next guest, he is an actor and musician whose credits include Runaways, Smallville, and Torchwood. Today he joins us to discuss the role of poet William Pratt, better known as Spike. Please welcome James Marsters. <laughs> Hey guys, good to see you, man. Good to see hey. you, boss. How are you? How are you holding up? I'm doing fabulously well. I spent the morning trying to learn how to play golf, which is harder than it looks. Oh yeah. Uh, but I don't have to play golf. I just have to look like I can play golf. I have to just act like I can play ball, <laughs> golf. So uh, they said that they were going to CGI all the golf balls in. Uh, so I just, uh, at some point, I just said, let's just CGI these golf clubs in. Uh, the, the the golf balls in now so i can uh, i can come in and under par on this course and then once we did that i was great yeah <laughs> nice i'm uh, looking forward to that project when it evolves and uh and for whatever it's worth for me um i adored you as mr fantastic on superhero squad <laughs> oh, wow you did your homework there oh no 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 i was watching it when it came out and uh, I, I watched it with my goddaughters when when they were of that age they were my excuse to watch the show it's like oh, i'm watching mm -hmm. it with them the little kids it's just like, yeah yeah it's like, oh spikes <laughs> mr fantastic that's awesome so yeah i got another uh, action figure out of that one that oh, oh yeah yeah the, i think i think action figures may come up so well ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us here as always we here at GalaxyCon. uh looking forward to the day when the universe gets a little bit back to normal and we can once again host you on our physical stages and get you back in front of your fans in the meantime we have this electronic forum we're so glad to have you all here today our team right now is going through the chat room pulling out the questions in the meantime i would just like to open it up with just what's been what's been the memory that the, that's lingered with you from being a part of buffy Oh, wow. Uh, just, <laughs> just being in heaven between the words action and cut and always hating to come back down to earth when they say that horrible word cut. Yeah. 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 When, the, when, the, when the writing is really good, the, the writing just kind of carries you and you don't have to do much and things just happen. Uh, and Buffy was like that. Yeah. Very fair. Very fair. Who's got another? I'm just, Sorry, I'm like, I, I missed the question because I was asking for more carrots. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, the question is just simply what's 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 been what's been your favorite what's been your favorite memory to come out of being a part of Buffy? These guys for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's... No, you know what, Emma, I was gonna say the same thing. I think for me, obviously I joined the cast, you know, season five, and I didn't directly I worked a lot with, you know. The minions and and Michelle Trachtenberg and Sarah, but the rest of the cast I've gotten to know over the last you know twenty years, I yeah, guess, yeah. which sounds crazy. And I yeah. truly like I love all these people. They're in my you know phone. I text them. We text each other, and we really care about each other. So to me, it's like I always say, it's it, it, getting cast was a wonderful part for the time when I was on the show. It was like winning the lottery, but the lottery has extended to you know friends for life. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. yeah. This, so I, I was going to say the same thing. This experience of these, oh, well, this is a new one, a virtual convention, but these conventions and this, the life after the show is really the most memorable, I think. There are more years of it. There was just a couple yeah. of months of, of, of season one. I don't know how long we shot. Oh, they, yeah, it is they, like being they, part of a family. Yeah. I remember, I remember a game. Do you guys remember this game we used to play with each other? Cause we used to shoot up to 20 hours a day and you get really tired when you do that. We used to, <laughs> at lunch, we'd look at each other and say, quick, what did we film this morning? And everyone no, would no be like, memory. uh, <laughs> yeah. God, I have no <laughs> idea. Okay. Cause yeah, your short term totally memory used to evaporate second, yeah. when you're that tired. So yeah. true. <laughs> or just like losing it and start giggling, but and, and you still have 10 hours to go. And you, you're already giggling. I got a kick. You've lost it. Literally just two <laughs> carrots at my head. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. Catch your beta carotene there, Emma. That's, that's live. That's live. <laughs> I just, I'm like, so, I'm so hungry. And, and I'm like, this is, I, I, like, we have to go to the store. Well, we're not going anywhere because it 
it's like one in two people or something in LA right now. So it's like, got to order food. And so literally like this is what's in my refrigerator. <laughs> it's <a> carrots. Like, <laughs> I feel like everything it is so friend. loud too. That's like, I picked the wrong thing, but I didn't, it was like <laughs> that or like, uncooked um brussels sprouts so <laughs> oh please eat the brussels sprouts <laughs> it sounds so gross doesn't it oh, oh my god, god. could have been worse she could have picked celery that that would have been louder <laughs> yeah. see your face try to gag down raw <laughs> <laughs> oh well oh, you know what god. Our producers let me know that we've got a good question bank. So what do you say we can roll our first one for our audience? And awesome. this is going to come from Amy. And she would like to know, did you have any input on the look and or personality of your characters? When they uh, cast the master, the pictures that they had drawn were all had uh, sort of long, dark, dirty hair, like Keith Richards kind of hair. Oh. And I had been studying... Uh, and a vampire dumb vampire dumb the world of vampires <laughs> dumb vampires i was studying dumb vampires <laughs> I was watching a lot of uh nosferatu the original yeah. that we're not mm -hmm. and i we talked a lot and i try, i wanted him to sort of harken back to the original vampire which is nosferatu mm -hmm. and uh so we came up with that with the with the bald pate and with yes this with that right there <laughs> And uh, and I was. It took five and a half hours or five hours to put it on, Oof. but uh, wow, but I was glad because I I couldn't have grown that much hair. <laughs> <laughs> so five and a half hours on. How many? How much time to take off? Uh, hour and a half. Not bad. We huh? got we got it down to three hours uh, to put it on by the end of the season because when they when we started, they didn't know exactly what color it should be, so they would put it on the foam on. And then they would paint it, and we could consult as we went along. And that eventually, if you watch ever first season front to back, uh, you'll see the punch bowl mouth that she refers to sort of comes in later. But they always took an hour. So we had to get it down once because then they would paint it when it was off, and they'd just put it on and then touch it up. But they always took an hour and a half. They were very gentle and kind and generous and Lots of tissues to mop my tears up from taking it <laughs> off. Yeah. Well, my uh, character in the breakdown, so they put these breakdowns out for casting of like what the character should be. And mine was like a woodland sprite, kind of elfin and like the, the complete antithesis of me. Uh, so I feel like Tara became more like me because in, <clears throat> in sort of the conception of her, it was so different. Uh, and I, I credit Marty Noxon because Marty was like, do we really need another woodland sprite? Any like little tiny elven person? Let's get the girl with the boobs. Come on. <laughs> um, and that's kind of that was my 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 what I brought to Tara was uh, boobs and uh, and a shy sort of hunched over quality that later became more more normal and and standing up straight and stuff. She got so more hot. comfortable with her little group. Look at you. <laughs> Less boob in that one. Look at those that, eyes. That's, that's not as booby. Just booby enough, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's just booby enough. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 all it's all in those eyes. Yeah, I knew I knew that Joss wasn't gonna really take my ideas, so I just kind of went behind his back because he was often not on set. He was off doing an Angel by the time I got in. And so he told me that I was a soulless vampire who didn't care about anybody or anything. And uh, then he left and I said, screw that. Uh, if I play it that way, he's going to kill me off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play love for Drusilla. Uh, yeah. and love for anything I can find, frankly. Uh, tr just trying to keep from getting killed. <laughs> so good. You, uh, you, you played it right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Claire, how about you? <laughs> Um, well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> Glory is a very distinct character. Oh, yeah. Um, when I think that my input into the character came when I went through the audition process, which was very short, by the way, um, two meetings, and that was it. 
but I had come to the audition and I have naturally curly hair and I had washed it and <laughs> totally <fried> it. <laughs> so it was kind of like crazy curly. And, and the first, I mean, I had a interpretation of the character because basically I had just two pages of sides and there was no character description other than female. And the character I think was called uh, Sherry or Cherry at that point. And I was like, you know, I'm either going to do this normal and I'm going to be like everyone else who does this, you know, two pages of dialogue, or I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. And so I based my audition scenes for glory off of Jack Nicholson in the shining. And I think that yes. that, paired with like my crazy hair was like the start of the character kick ass Amazing. yeah that's i see awesome. it too that was a that was that was a that was, that was, that was great choice like evolved you know she she definitely but it's funny um that you talk about the hair my hair if you watch the season like they worked so hard to make it look undone and i was like no just let me come with it wet and it'll dry the right way um but like at that point in the Aww. season they were putting it in curlers and then like spraying it and then taking it out and they really didn't need to do any of that they just should just have me come with wet hair to set and it would have been fine every day <laughs> <laughs> nice that was my show. <laughs> uh, Emma, how about you? Um, well, I was, I mean, there wasn't much for me. I was a guest star. So it was kind of yeah. like come in and I don't remember what I did. I just, I, I, I think the thing was, is that I said something funny. I don't think it was kind of supposed to be or something. I don't know. And I, I just <laughs> delivered a line like and made him laugh. And so I was like, okay. So I got that. I got the job and then it just kind of became that thing of finding, finding the beats to be funny, which wasn't hard because the writing was so funny. I mean, she's just, she just only got more ridiculous as the seasons went on and more layers to add in. But, you know, um, yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't like a lot of like a big backstory for me or anything because sure. I wasn't supposed sure. to be there for more than one episode. So it just, um, I, I don't know, whatever my little quirks, whatever I brought to that character, yeah, they wove in and I reacted off of whatever they wrote and it just, it came from you, there. You, you found the moments. Found the moments, you know, yeah. That's, that's what uh, good actors do. We, we find those moments to ex express what's not on the paper. Well, there was plenty on the paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was like, yeah. this is like crap writing, and I'm having to do so much work. You know, it wasn't I, like that at all. I just I mean, take like, nothing away from <laughs> that writing team on those shows. No, no, no. Uh, they were me. all the best. Yeah. Absolutely. And Amy, thank you. Wonderful question. Uh, what's next? Job, um, Amy. What, who were your greatest inspirations growing up as actors? Oh, nice. The point of being an actor is you don't have to grow up, isn't it? <laughs> you have to start paying bills though oh so, uh, yeah or oh, yeah adults. people do it um, um, mine was Sigourney Weaver and Meryl Streep those are mine too mm -hmm. trying to yeah. think of as far as females go um, I, I wanted know. to be Albert Finney when I grew up <laughs> I remember I had a picture of John Savage with a gun in his mouth in Deer Hunter wow. Uh, oh, yeah. on my wall because I was I was doing like cheesy musical theater in my hometown of Modesto I, it was actually pretty good but it was you know guys and dolls and stuff and I remember watching that scene and not understanding how he got emotionally to that level him and De Niro in that scene in Deer Hunter where they're being forced to play Russian roulette and so and and Savage is just having a mental breakdown and I just did not understand what the process was to get there and i that yeah. and i was i was just like i want to be able to do that i want to be able to to be that real and that intense at the same time and it just didn't look like acting to me it looked like an actual mental breakdown and then i learned the secret of acting is like you actually have to kind of have a mental breakdown <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah so it hurts but uh yeah that was a big one for me and meryl oh. street always meryl street who was in that movie Oh, yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was her first movie. That's right. Yeah. And I think she won an Oscar. 
I think she did. Didn't can she? she like? Can she like ever like, not win an Oscar? Get, Is it possible? Yeah. Movie without <laughs> right? Well, she's there's... always nominated. I mean, she's always like, nominated. And yeah. nowadays, you see why. You're just like she's incredible. <laughs> I was like, I was kind of a funny little kid. Well, I was into dancing more than acting growing up. So Brishnikov was a huge oh, yeah. i was gonna me. marry him i, I know and him. what was the movie white nights right nights i've oh. night. seen it in the entire time so another hot. favorite movie that i absolutely <laughs> loved and <laughs> i don't know what this says about me as a teenager i watched i probably watched heathers like a hundred oh, times yeah. i That's loved so that course. movie yeah, we not that it. they were like acting inspiration but it was just kind of like that was I don't know. That was my jive. And then I had a really funny poster. Again, not necessarily an acting inspiration, but an inspirational person. Me, I had a funny poster of Albert Einstein over my bed when I was growing up. And it said gravity. It had the calculation for gravity. And then it said gravity cannot be held responsible for people falling in love. Yeah. So oh. Oh. I, I, I loved I loved that poster. That was those were my little weird quirky things. <laughs> uh, no, no, and, and and Heather's Heather's is the interesting thing. That was like the there was the crowd that was seal of John Hughes films uh, of of the eighties, and then there was the Heather's crowd. <laughs> right, know? I was the Heather's crowd. <laughs> yeah, who was the actor in Heather's? Was it? Snyder. No, uh, writer. No, no, writer. No, no, writer. No, no, writer. Yeah. Chris Snyder. Snyder. Writer, Chris he was doing Jack Nicholson. Just back to Jack Nicholson. Uh, yeah. He was doing Jack Nicholson at that point in his career. Yeah. Christian sure. Slater, yeah. I didn't know they Isn't he still doing them? Kind of, yeah. I should try that. It worked for Claire. <laughs> <That's neat. laughs> Mark, one time. I... Uh, well, I, I came up, I didn't I, I didn't think I'd be an actor till I was a junior in college. Or until I, yeah, I, so, uh, and then I did all Shakespeare. So I, Paul Schofield, Alec Guinness, those guys mm. oh, yeah. were the Paul people Schofield. that I, uh, Really, yeah. and I didn't see them in film, I, and I didn't even see them in on stage because I was in America and they were in England. Yeah. But uh, I read about them, and they were the kinds of actors. And when Schofield in Man for All Seasons, when I, I saw that several dozen times, and so he was uh, he's probably the, the person the most. Although Alistair Sims Christmas Carol was very inspirational, he was a great Scrooge. Mm -hmm. That. The, the the sim version I think is the definitive film version. I think so too. It's I mean he's just so amazingly plastique and just fluid. Constantly. And, Albert and, Finney was pretty good though. Albert yeah. Finney, was, Albert Finney there, was, there's, was there's really very good. There's a lot of great Scrooges, but I I think I start with Sim. All yeah, right. fine. I agree. start with Sim. Finney. Finney was great though. Finney I'll, was I'll was say great. it. I'll say it right now. Jim Carrey was absolutely fabulous. I, I'm just I have to say it. He was very good. He was good, I'll stop especially now. in all the characters. Yes. <laughs> he did the whole thing. By the way, Mark proves the, the 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 adage that the nicest person on the set is the most villainous on film. Mark, you couldn't be. You're the, you're you're just a saint. But God, <laughs> I've hated you all my life because of Animal House. Oh, good. And, and then I remember meeting you and being like, "Oh, that's right. Wait a minute. He was just acting. He's actually a nice person." Wow. Yeah, you fooled me. Uh, you should see him boiling lobsters alive and listening to them in one crazy yeah. summer. <laughs> <laughs> you get when you play the bad guy, you get to expiate all that uh, all that uh, dark stuff, and and then you can just you can come off as a totally charming, wonderful, nice guy. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't true, but that's how you. Uh, uh, Ethelchit, thank you. Wonderful question. And what do we have next? And this comes from Matthew. If you could become a vampire, werewolf, or another magical creature from the show, what would it be? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Mm. Nobody wants to be a werewolf. Let's just get that out of the way right now. We're yeah. not going to. No, that not seems, gonna, that seems not cool. Thing. You wake up and, naked everywhere. Yeah, seriously. I don't <laughs> think that I'd want to be a vampire because I don't think that I could like deal with that much life like i think that i have a psychology where i can i can keep a good attitude for about 80 years but after that <laughs> you know what i mean guys like i know stuff exactly happens in my pain happens i mean <laughs> i just don't know if i could keep dealing with the news or with what you know the world or with myself or i think yeah. i think i'm good for 80 years and after that i've got to i gotta go so probably not vampire what would it be witch i'd be a witch 
Maybe if Amber would be a witch with me, I would be a witch. I'd be a witch. What, does, what, yeah. what do witches, witches get great. to do? They get to do anything they damn well please. Oh, yeah. That's what I want to be. You know? Yeah. Join me. We'll just switch <laughs> that. We'll, we'll be the weird sisters. It'd be awesome. Yeah, I well, think just yeah. some witchery. Just witching with you ladies would be fun. So in sorcery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Yeah, I'm uh, a witch. Witch. All right. Witch. So whether you call them witch, Wiccans, or warlocks, we got for for what we have a rare universal answer from a panel. Matthew, thank you. That doesn't happen here very very often. Uh, what do we have next? And I wouldn't want to be the invisible man, because I'm actually a nice guy. So it would be lost on me. You know, the invisible man. Right. He's got to be a nefarious person so that interesting things happen when they goes invisible. That's Give true. invisibility to a nice person. What are they going to do? Really, it would be fun to be Claude Range, though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He, he was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Jesus, I just yeah. saw him the other night in a film that I had never seen before. He's he's great. I really like Claude Rains. He's my new hero. <laughs> has, everyone, wait, has everyone here seen The Last Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss? No. Yes. Uh -huh. Not yet. I've I heard, liked it. I've heard great yeah. things. I liked it a lot. She was. It's really good. I I, good I love the really I love the original, the film with Claude Rains. So the fact that they used that, they, I wish they'd used a different title because it didn't <laughs> have really anything to do with. I, yeah. I I turned in to watch it and I was thinking, Elizabeth Moss I like, an Invisible Man, the whole story of the Invisible Man I really like. But anyway, is she the Invisible Man? I haven't seen it. She no. is. No, that's <laughs> right. Her husband's the Invisible Man. He's a, he's a jerk, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. You have to be a jerk. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. he's, like, he's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, nice guy, too. invisible man. He would just sit around playing video games. I'm invisible. <laughs> Who cares? Emma. <laughs> Really hungry. Yeah, me too. So, uh, what's next? Uh, from Jeffrey. Are you blowing up inside your shirt? Oh my. She's trying to she's trying to buffer the crunch. Oh, trying to. Oh, trying to. <laughs> How do I block the crunch? Crunch all you want. We'll make more. <laughs> Jeffrey wants to know what's the one thing you've learned about yourself during this pandemic. Ooh. <laughs> I'm good with pandemics. I'm just fine. That doesn't surprise me at all. No, yeah. You have like eight video games, and you are cool. Yeah, seriously. I, you know, you can download them. You don't even have to go to GameStop anymore. Sorry, guys. Sorry, right, GameStop. You're, you guys are fine anyway. But, you, you know, just download it. I'm good. Got an Oculus for Christmas. I'm double good. Yeah. I like to isolate. I, like to be I need people more than I thought. Or more. No, I mean, I always knew. I mean, that, that came out wrong. I need a more... I like and I require time to myself where I can just be me in my own energy. I'm not a mom, not a wife, not a friend, not a daughter, not a dog owner, nothing. Just like my space where no one's observing anything I do. Um, I just need it less than I thought. You know, it's sure. like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I miss, I miss, like, I'm like, I need to make more of an actual see you effort which is hard you know everyone's got very busy lives and so it's hard to actually make you know it can be challenging especially with mom you just like to make that time but like i really when this is over whenever it's over we're vaccinated i'm like i just really want to give a lot of hugs mm -hmm. <laughs> i want to give a lot of hugs mm -hmm. <laughs> i yeah. want to hold you yeah you know yeah. absolutely absolutely claire how about you um, what have I learned about myself <laughs> during the <laughs> pandemic? Well, I've learned that I am a much more efficient grocery shopper in person than mm. online. <laughs> I, do, I do not care for online grocery ordering. I prefer to go in the store and see things with my own eyes. Um, and I have, <laughs> I, I have been homeschooling four kids. We have, you know, we have a pod here of school children and four of them are mine and five of them are not and i have learned that i i that i can work in extenuating circumstances and still get things done <laughs> like that's, that's surprising though you're you 
You're you. So, but it's it's been you know it's been challenging, of course, and and I'm one of those people who one day I'm like baking banana bread, and the next day I'm like crying into my glass of wine. But um, it's been it's been great to spend the extra time with my family, and I'm really grateful because my kids are getting older. I mean, my oldest is going to be 13, in wow. and I know James, you know what it's like, yeah. but it's it's <laughs> you know I think wow, she's spent yeah. the most time at home that she's going to spend, and the next couple years are the last before she goes away. And so I'm really trying to absorb my time with them and just, you know, get to know them as little people and not just my children and not do as much mothering and be more friend, which is not what you're supposed to do, but eh, oh well. <laughs> I feel like all the rules are out the window with the pandemic. And you are homeschooling nine kids? Well, I my time? four are here. We have a pod, so we have a um, a tutor teacher who comes every day. They still are in private school, so they still do their Zoom school from oh, sure. you know eight to two. But yes, we have a school group that is a pod. Okay. Yeah, wow. and that's in my house. <laughs> so it's literally like this, where your your kids are at one, and there's other kids of other families on another screen, and a teacher. And okay. yeah, well, the the all there's. There's five first graders, and then there's a third grader, which is my son, and I have a first grader also, and then two fifth graders, one being my daughter, and a sixth grader, which is my other daughter, uh, and they we have desks and chairs, and I mean, they have their separate entrance to the house, and it's okay. full on, They a science guy comes once a week, we, you know, they do archery, it's a full on, a full setup. <laughs> All right. You have adapted. Wow. Yeah. 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 You have okay. certainly adapted. Amber, how about you? I can cook. I didn't realize. Apparently, <laughs> oh. I, I, I can I can do that. Um, I made biscuits twice and, <laughs> and tortillas. Oh, you're doing bread. That's yeah. hard. That, that is. is. Yeah. You're, ba you're yeah. baking. That's what you're doing. I was baking and, and making other things too. And yeah, no, like I, I really enjoy cooking. There's something really satisfying about um, the completion of, of the exercise of cooking. You make it, people eat it, you're done. In our industry, there's like never any like closure. It's just, you're constantly waiting for something or it, it, there's, it's just this constant like state of, of wait and cooking. There's like a beginning, middle, and an end. It's very satisfying. <laughs> since uh, since you've just discovered uh, cooking and baking, uh, what's been the best thing you think you've made so far? Uh, I've gotten really good at making uh, chocolate truffles. Mm. Mm. Chocolate, Amber? Mm. Hmm? Wow. Dark chocolate? Yeah. Mm. Send some oh. over. For me yeah. in the pot. <laughs> I've made dark chocolate. I've made yeah. sweet. I've made milk. You just like make a ganache. <clears throat> And then uh, you let oh, it firm up, and then you roll you roll them, and then roll them in like cocoa powder or powdered sugar. It's so easy, so easy, and so good, and bad for your teeth. But that's okay. I haven't seen a dentist in a year. So All I'm right. Sure that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, uh, Mark, how about you? I'm uh, cooking too. I I find that I enjoy oh. cooking, although I'm not very. Uh, uh, I, my son gave me a, a ninja foodie, and I, I'm really excited about Ooh. making chicken thighs in the ninja foodie. Oh, so that's, that's the kind of cooking that excites me. Although I did start baking pies, and I made a really good uh, coconut cream pie. Uh -huh. mm. And it's all about the crust. They, pie, mm. pie makers will tell you that. So I'm, I'm, making, I'm trying to make a pie a week. Wow. That's awesome. mm. Yes. And eat it too, and so I've got some extra COVID. <laughs> with. Oh, I, 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 my 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 nearest resolution for 2021 is to lose the COVID quarantine weight I gained in 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's just, yeah. Indeed. Hey, and a reminder to our to our uh, audience, if you'd like to chat with our guests like I am now or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And Jeffrey, that was a wonderful question. Thank you so much. Let's roll another. What do we have next? From Amelia, what are your favorite qualities about your Buffy character? Hmm. That's a good question, actually. That's a really good question. I, I can start with that one. Um, you know, Glory is often considered the big bad of the season, but I, I mean, I think she's a great person. <laughs> she just, she knows what she wants and she goes for it and she's direct and she's 
forthcoming with her emotions and her feelings. And I admire that about her. And, you know, it was just the difference of worlds that led her to have to sacrifice Dawn to get home. But at the end of the day, that's all she wanted. So, you know, I personally, I really enjoy her honesty, if you will. <laughs> yeah. I like that. She was kind. Except she, for the when, Dawn thing. She was Especially kind. when I tied you up, James. Do you remember that well, yeah, and, and Pushing that rocks glass into my face. That was less than completely kind. But he did it gently. So I mean, I, okay. as soon as you told me what I needed to know, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's You're just cruel, like my brain out. So. Yeah. yeah. That, again, a casualty. <laughs> Yeah, I love that, that Spike was just such a poser. He was like the most successful poser in the world. The truth is that he is very vulnerable and he's got a big heart, but he could he could pose as if he was a tough punk rocker and get away with it because he was a vampire, so he could back it up. But the and and he would also he would always act like he didn't care about anything. Like apathy was like a major kind of color for playing the character, but underneath it. He was protecting a little poet, you know, who was yeah. uh, who who had been who had been beaten around a little bit. Uh, that's what I loved about it. Just just a lot of love underneath, but then just capped with like "fuck you, I don't care." <laughs> Can you say that's that? Um, for Anya too. Yep. I mean, Anya was pretty brutal and you know, super. I mean, she definitely gave off like. I don't care. I think honestly, a lot of times she didn't, <laughs> but I, yeah. I think also there was a, a deep reserve of, um, just just like an an emotional canyon, like to yeah. just just had so much on buried on top of it, um, you know. Uh, through whatever, through just life and trauma or whatever. But I think ultimately she, which is why I think she ultimately did the right thing. You know, she just, she had a lot of humanity. It just was stuffed down there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Mark, how about you? A sense of humor. I really liked the, uh, enjoyed the master's sense of humor, sense of irony and his persistence. I mean, you kind of <laughs> have to have a good sense of humor to last 800 years. And you have to be pretty persistent to last 800 years. And, true. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Amber, bring us on. Uh, oh, no, you got Mark. Mark, you're in. No, no, I, I was going to say, I, I, I wish he'd been a little bit more uh, thorough in killing Buffy, though. <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad he wasn't that thorough because I never would have had a job. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that well, when, job. When, really when, when I... When I first was cast, and I've told this story before, when I first was cast, I asked Joss what the arc of the character was through the first season, because I knew I was going to do the whole first season. And he said, <laughs> it's really great because in the last episode, you kill Buffy. And I said, <laughs> oh, that's nice. So if it gets picked up, does that mean the second season will be called Master the Buffy Slayer? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, well, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, I, okay, Amber, take it away. Uh, I liked her integrity. She was just a very, very um, just person, which person, and I, I liked that about her. I, she stood by by her uh, her ethics and in world yeah. compass. I liked that about her. She never well, just so much that temptation that the character had again to do just either change things tremendously or just take shortcuts in life and. Yeah, again, so everything was done. The character was very judicious. Yeah, and I think that was absolutely was a lot of the stuff. prudent. Was that the word prudent? That was that was the introduction. <laughs> yes, the prudent. Yeah, see, Let's go back around. There you go, and Amelia. Thank you. That was a wonderful question. Uh, I think we have time for one more. So let's see if we can roll it out a good one. And this is gonna come from Kristen. What does the show mean to you? Don't give up. In three words, life life is uh, challenging. Sometimes it hurts, but it's worth it. Uh, so don't give up. Yeah. Just yeah. do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate. Thank you guys for kind. That was not funny, but I appreciate that. 
It was. It was. It was fine. I, I think oh, we touched yeah. on it a little bit earlier. You know, to me, the show is obviously so impactful um, and has garnered fans for you know much longer than it was even on the air and new fans to this day. But for me, the show means friendship. It means, you know, it's connecting with my friends who were on it, who've become lifelong friends. And then mirroring that when we go to conventions and we get to meet the fandom and we see their connection to each other and what the show means amongst them. So it just, it just, it, it's, it's about, you know, human relationships and connections and friendship to me. Mm -hmm. No, I think James actually hit it on the on the head too with the the don't give up because like you will mm -hmm. find your your group, you will find your people. I think that the show is all about like, okay, I feel alone, I I don't fit. Now I can become part of something, and I think the fans have found each other online. They're part of this big con community, and all of us have found each other. We're part of like a community and a family, and. Mm -hmm. You just keep on trucking and you will find your place. Among fandom, the Scooby gang is infamous and everybody's a part of it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Also, yeah, girls kick ass. This is something that <laughs> not enough people were saying when Buffy was first coming out. Uh, and I remember some people actually got offended by it. I remember I was in the back of a Lincoln uh, town car with one of the original cast of Star Wars and he was pissed off about Buffy. And he was telling me, that no girl that size could hit hard enough to defend herself. And I said, dude, I, I do enough of my own stunts that I'm, I'm fighting the stunt doubles for Buffy all the time. They're all triple black belts, my man. They're the same size as Sarah Geller, so they're not tall, and they could kill us in seconds in the back of this Lincoln Town car. And he, we went back and forth, and then I said, I go, um, how tall was Bruce Lee, brother? And then that was the end of my conversation with my Star Wars hero. But I was never happier. He was oh, so angry. God, tell me who that is. <laughs> I would never will. But ah! he, was, <laughs> he was really uh, upset. I, I, as, I don't. I don't want to know. I, as a subversive I, I, artist, I was. I was never happier than just to see him kind of squirm with that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's. It's fine. I'm a Star Trek fan anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm both. You get to be both. I like to I like have my old, cake and eat it too. The old Star Wars, the old Star Wars. Yeah, original New Hope. I, 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 you don't Empire. have to choose. I'm both. Mm. Mm. New mm. Hope. I'm a New Hope man. New Hope. Oh yeah. All time. Amber, can I can I chime in on this? Oh, um, oh, she did. Oh no, you didn't. I did. Yes, you did. You did. I did. Yeah, I'm right. 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 twice. So, yeah, I always, this is, you're right. Yeah. This was this was a little bit of a repeat question, but uh, yeah, Mark, how about you? Oh, what did the show mean to me? Well, it, I, I, on one level, what James said that the show means to me as a uh, as a piece of literature, it does mean don't give up, keep fighting, and uh, and find your people. And to me personally. <laughs> It meant money when I didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Real estate. And it surprisingly enough meant money on and on into the future, well after the first season, which is all which which is, is nice. Not a lot of money, but just enough money for coffee. Um, but uh, but but the, 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 the community of fans, the community of Care. of people who participated in the making of this thing, uh, that that probably is the thing that really sort of pumps my blood the most, I think. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to oversell this, but I do, kind of, a little bit. Right. <laughs> so um, J Joss and I, uh, we both, like Mark, we love Shakespeare. And Joss's favorite play is Macbeth. And when you think mm -hmm. about it, Buffy is very much, is, is very akin to, to uh, I'm sorry, is Hamlet. He, his favorite okay, is Hamlet. Okay. So Hamlet is a story of trying to comes of age, he becomes 18 and he gets to the, the point of life where, where a person realizes that the world is completely messed up, that the, your parents don't know what they're talking about. Your teachers don't even know the subject matter. The, 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 the wider world is just a complete mess. And what does a human being do when you're old enough to know this? Are you going to give up or are you going to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them? And, uh, you know, Hamlet decides to to fight and then he gets killed but he did fight um uh and and buffy is really about that 
it's really uh, it, the the vampires are just metaphors for the messed up world, and they're they're, they're supposed to be overcome and fought against. Uh, but it's really it's it's about that time of life, adolescence, between childhood and adulthood, when a lot of people they don't come out of it so well. They end up giving up, and they go into an adulthood, uh, which is which is uh, having given up which is really sad. Uh, and so I think that, that that's one of the things that I love about Buffy is giving that message. The target audience was adolescence. And so we were able to say consistently to people growing up, don't give up. It's worth it. Keep fighting. Be like Buffy. Go out and slay it, you know. Um, so anyway. That's what Ab- I'm absolutely. Very don't well storm the Capitol, though. No. No. Okay. Nah, nah. That's naughty as hell. Right. No. Kristen, thank you so much. Wonderful question to lead us off on. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Panelists, any final words for our audience before we go backstage? Wear a mask. Thank Wear a you. Mask. Yeah. Keep safe because we love you and we want yeah. to see you all in person soon. Wear a Stay mask. And they're saying wear a double mask now. Double mask. Vaccinated. Yes. Stay right. safe. Stay safe. Yeah. And we appreciate yeah. all you guys all these years yeah. later. Yeah, Whoops, there. Where do I? There. Right the love. There. <laughs> the love. Yeah. The heart. There it is. We love I you. Thanks, Patty. Uh, well, Patty. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. Pleasure to serve you today. I have thank enjoyed you, being Rosencrantz and Gilderstern to your Hamlets. Uh, once again, thank you for joining <laughs> us. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you for all your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye bye, everyone. Take bye. care. Thank you, guys. Keep bye. watching.